Hello everyone, welcome to DevOps Info channel. Today we are going to talk about the continuation of the Azure Site Recovery. Uh, we had the introduction and overview of the Azure Site Recovery a few weeks back. Uh, so as promised, uh, we are going to uh, continue uh, with the second part uh, of the Azure Site Recovery where we'll look on uh, the initial part where we are going to set up a disaster recovery for the VMs running in the Azure. Um, and uh, in this uh, video, we'll see how to set up the, the, the disaster recovery for the Azure VMs uh, using the Azure Site Recovery. So we will uh, verify uh, what are the Azure uh, uh, settings that we need to configure and then uh, what are the uh, readiness that we need to do for Azure VMs and then uh, how to do the VM replication. So uh, as we said, uh, the Azure Site Recovery is a Microsoft uh, Azure service. Uh, uh, that allows you to uh, replicate and protect your on-premise uh, or uh, Azure uh, VMs uh, by uh, using the Azure Site Recovery. Uh, so it's one of the high availability solution that was uh, offered, uh, uh, that's offering is coming from the Microsoft. Uh, it helps you to ensure that your uh, business continuity to pro by providing the failover and the failback capabilities. So uh, there are a few things uh, to get started with the Azure Site Recovery, which we discussed in the previous uh, overview video. Uh, if you missed that, I would, write, I would I highly recommend you to take a look at that. Um, so uh, in this example, uh, I have already a virtual machine uh, which is uh, running in the Azure. Uh, this is one of my uh, test uh, domain controller which is running. So there are two ways uh, how we could uh, prepare your uh, VMs running in the Azure to replicate in the Azure Site Recovery. Um, so the first way is like simply if you are going to uh, test one VM, you can just simply uh, go into uh, the, the VM uh, on the settings, you have something called uh, disaster recovery. So when you click on the disaster recovery, then uh, you have the option to uh, configure the replication uh, settings. So uh, when you take a look at the Azure Site Recovery, uh, like when you click on the disaster recovery, it is taking you to the uh, Azure Site Recovery. And here, like uh, it, it is giving you the option to choose the target region, which is very important uh, in this scenario because uh, the target target region uh, is um, uh, plays an important role uh, where your uh, VMs are replicated. So in my case, uh, the the VMs are already uh, present in the uh, Western Europe. So uh, in this example, I'm just going to uh, select, uh, for example, uh, North Europe. Uh, let me see. There should be an option to choose the target region. Yeah. So I have selected North Europe because uh, I wanted to keep my uh, uh, target region nearby. Uh, so uh, I have selected this. Uh, yeah, but we are well enough to choose um, the target region based on your requirement. So the next uh, setting is the advanced one, like where you go, is like it brings you to this screen. Uh, in this screen, you have the option uh, to uh, choose the subscription, of course, where you have the uh, enough uh, credits and uh, the privilege to uh, do uh, this task. Um, so if you take a look at um, in, the, uh, in the target settings, the source, uh, I have a resource group where my VM is running, uh, which is RGNL, and then towards having the virtual network. Uh, and in the target, uh, it uh, simply uh, creates uh, one like this. And if you want to choose uh, a specific uh, target resource group, you have to create it already and it would be uh, listing it down here uh, but yeah in, in this case like yeah it is just showing as a new resource group azure site recovery uh, which denotes that it's for the azure site recovery uh, the same goes with the virtual network and in the availability i have a single instance so that's the reason it's showing single instance if you want to choose availability set for the target you can also do that um, and the proximity placement uh, this proximity placement is uh, something like uh, placing your uh, uh, server somewhere uh, nearby uh, so that will, uh, uh, you know, uh, make sure that your server is uh, uh, reach reachable. So in the proximity placement, uh, you have an option to drop down and select. Uh, you can choose the proximity placement. Uh, this is the general settings. You have the subscription, resource group, virtual network, availability, proximity placement, all these things that we have to set. And uh, the next one is the important, the capacity reservation settings. So in the capacity reservation groups, uh, you have an option to uh, 
reserve a capacity. So this is on-demand capacity reservation that enables you to reserve the computer capacity in Azure. Uh, but however, you know, you, you, it's not mandatory that you need to select. But if you select, then uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, it's reserved uh, for mandatory. So and also in the storage settings, you have uh, something called. Uh, uh, the option to churn the VM. So this normal churn is like something the VM which is running uh, instance, for example, doing a normal operations. It's not uh, uh, consuming a lot of uh, uh, read write. But if you are using a high intensity VM, then you have to choose the high churn VMs. So this uh, is very important uh, to choose uh, based on your utilization of the uh, VM. So here, uh, this is also cache storage account. Uh, this uh, cache storage account, you suggest to leave it uh, by default. Uh, so, uh, and the source managed disk, uh, here you have the standard SDD. If you want to make it to uh, premium SDD, uh, you can uh, select it. Uh, and the disk to replicate, you can select to include, yeah, it's selected by default, so you don't need to do anything. And in the replication settings, uh, here you have the vault subscription, the recovery services vault, resource group and replication policy and in the extension settings this is uh, very important that you need to take a look at it um, here you have two options to update uh, uh, your uh, vm which is replicated so here you can say uh, allow azure site recovery to manage which will automatically manage and uh, replicate your vms uh, and do the updates uh, yeah it will do the updates uh, by its own so you don't need to worry about it uh, but when you choose an automation account, then uh, you can have an automation account through which you can manage the update of your uh, VMs. Uh, but in this case, uh, it's it's better you just leave it to the Azure Site Recovery so that you'll be able to take it until and unless you don't have any further uh, customization uh, to uh, specifically do the update uh, on your own. Uh, and going uh, next, uh, for example, uh, this is what we did um, and then when you do a start replication it is just simply going to uh, start replication so it's uh, creating the target uh, resources uh, and uh, i'm also doing it uh, right now uh, when i'm uh, doing the video but this is also um, uh, you know uh, just a, a direct demo uh, i did not uh, prepare it uh, upfront so let's see what is the status uh, once uh, the replication is completed so now after a few minutes, uh, we are back uh, because it took some time for the replication to complete. So the moment uh, when the replication is complete, um, you just need to go into the recovery services world. And here uh, you can see the new uh, recovery services world, which is created. So when I navigate into the recovery services world, uh, this is uh, the recovery services world created as a result of the task that we did from that particular uh, VM. So here uh, you just need to go into the site recovery because we did not uh, do the backup. So when you go into the site recovery, here it is going to give you overall health um, of the VMs. So here we just did uh, one uh, VM to the Azure site recovery. Here it says the replication health um, and then we see one warning. Uh, uh, we take a look at it uh, and we see the configuration. There is no issues with the configuration. So basically uh, what happens is like uh, when you complete uh, this task, uh, it creates a recovery services vault. Uh, so the recovery services vault is a central management entity for the Azure Site Recovery. So here uh, it stores the configuration settings, the recovery points and manages the replication and the recovery operations. So uh, here like once we have uh, prepared the replication settings, uh, uh, like uh, we can do the monitoring and testing um, all those tasks so when you just scroll down um, here you see uh, there is an error which says the vss provider is missing uh, so maybe that's the reason we get the warning uh, but still if we scroll down uh, because here uh, we are we have chosen only the azure virtual machines we have not gone into the vmware and hyper-v uh, so here in the infrastructure view uh, we see the azure site recovery we have one virtual machine and we here we have uh, one cache storage account uh, because it, it requires uh, you know a storage account uh, which is very important for the azure site recovery to uh, store the configuration and do the do the replication uh, in case of uh, uh, any uh, disaster uh, occurs you'll be able to fail uh, fail over uh, to the replicated uh, uh, target so that's the reason it requires a cache storage account 
So uh, if you see the overall uh, scroll, if you scroll down, it says yeah, one virtual machine and one cache storage account. And uh, if you want to do the failover, uh, what you need to do is like, uh, for example, uh, I go into uh, the VM, uh, which is uh, this one, uh, for example, yeah, this is the VM, which is uh, replicated. So if I go and click on the VM, so here you have an option to right click and do an option uh, uh, to do a failover, test failover, uh, cleanup test failover, uh, and all these things. So as we speak, uh, what I did is like I just simply uh, came into the virtual machines and the virtual machines, uh, I wanted to do the test. So I just did the test failover. So as a result of that, it is executing some action. So if you see um, um, the test, um, it was, uh, yeah, as a result of it, it is doing some action. So we need to give it some time. So here uh, it says the status. So when we go here, yeah, prerequisite check for the test failover is successful, uh, creating a test, virtual machine is successful, preparing the virtual machine is successful, and starting the virtual machine is successful. So in this case, like uh, the test failover, what we did is correct. Uh, so if we go back and uh, see for the virtual machines, I'm not sure if we will see we'll see a new virtual machine yes of course we see uh, so here we see the uh, hq dc test because this is the test virtual machine so it is also created uh, in the region north europe and it is running um, and uh, yeah so we see your vm is replicated and it's running so if we go to the hq test uh, i could see all the configuration whatever it was uh, present. Um, uh, I had the four gigs memory. Is yes, of course it's having the same uh, Windows 2016 data center. So uh, basically, uh, after uh, doing the test failover, uh, I had an option to do the cleanup test failover. So I did the cleanup test failover. Uh, so let's see. Um, after doing the cleanup test failover, are we able to uh, see the the VM which was created as a result of the test failover? I'm just refreshing the portal. Um, let's give it some time. Yes. That's well, uh, we don't see the VM uh, HQDC test anymore. So the moment when we did, when we did the cleanup test failover, uh, the, the VM which was created as a result uh, of the test failover is gone. So which means it is not an actual uh, failover which we did. Um, and uh, you know, that's a possibility, only the replication of the uh, data is present on this test failover and you, you wouldn't be able to connect if you try to do an RDP to this test failover uh, VM. Uh, uh, you wouldn't be able to connect because it will have only the private IP. Because it's just only for tests to see whether your replication is uh, successful or not. So um, having said that, um, if you go back, uh, so basically what you need to do is you just come to the recovery services vault, uh, open the, uh, the, the recovery service vault which was created for you, and then go to the navigate to the site recovery. So in the site recovery, uh, all you need to do is just scroll down um, and then you just click on the virtual machine, uh, which you wanted to test the failover. So here uh, you can do a right click and then uh, do a failover. So we already tested the test failover. So when you do a failover, here you will see an option to uh, checking whether the failover can be performed. You see the source is the West Europe and destination is the North Europe uh, because that's how we set up the uh, replication settings. and. Uh, here uh, you see the recovery point. Uh, so you see the latest process. Uh, so uh, this one will give the lowest RPO, but uh, we just go with the lowest RPO. Uh, I, I'm sure you know about what is RPO and RTO. Uh, I don't need to explain that. So if you go to uh, shut down the machine before picking the failover, uh, so you are going to just initiate the failover. Uh, I'm sure this failover process is going to take some time. Uh, but uh, this is the way that you need to initiate the failover. Uh, so the moment when your uh, failover is completed, then you will be able to see the VM, uh, which is running completely on the target region. Uh, in our case, it is going to be North Europe. So let's give it uh, some time and uh, see the results. So now after a few minutes, the failover is completed. Uh, we could see uh, the, the new uh, HQ DC, which is created on the resource group uh, Azure Site Recovery ASR is uh, created and it is running if you could notice uh, the actual source uh, host uh, which is uh, present on the west europe is stopped deallocated and the one which we uh, triggered the failover is started and it's uh, in the running state in the north europe so well come looking into the the replicated items uh, we could see yeah the, the replication health uh, its failover is committed 
the configuration issues there is no problem uh, and also the agent status is healthy so by doing this we are uh, clear that uh, the, the vm is replicated uh, to the target and it is running successfully uh, so looking into uh, further uh, you know like you can uh, you can also see some uh, events which is coming uh, because uh, the VSS product is missing. We we saw it from the uh, from the beginning, uh, so that's also one part which you need to make sure the VSS provider is uh, stable. Um, and uh, looking into uh, yeah the VM which is replicated, you can uh, simply go ahead and uh, connect. But uh, you know by default uh, when you uh, do a, a failover, uh, it's common. To reconfigure the network settings because the public IP address is, is not added to make it accessible from the internet. So basically, you have to go into the networking and then uh, go to your NIC uh, and then basically add a, a public IP address. And after that, you will be able to uh, uh, you know access the VM. So overall, we see uh, with the VM replication on the uh, Azure, uh, it's it's perfectly fine. Uh, we see its failover is committed, and also when you go into the recovery services vault, uh, you go back uh, to uh, yeah the recovery services vault, and then uh, basically to the site recovery. In the site recovery, you see uh, the replication health is successful, and failover health is warning uh, because of the VSS uh, error message which we saw. And if you scroll down. Um, we see like this is the primary and uh, the storage account uh, and it's it's running. So if you would still like to uh, do further things like uh, for example if I want to uh, do the disabled replication uh, I can do that uh, because currently this is uh, uh, made as a, a primary so uh, like currently this is running as a primary so if you want to do the uh, failover I can do the failover it would go back to the uh, uh, to the Western Europe, which is the, the target in this scenario. So I can also do a disabled replication if I wanted to do, uh, but uh, yeah, there is no point in doing that. Uh, so uh, in few cases, you can do a disabled replication. Uh, for example, uh, in, in also the, the Azure Site Recovery, the recovery services want is used to, you know, migrate the VM from the on-premise to the cloud. In that case, like we do uh, the failover and, the, and also we do the disabled replication. Uh, those cases, you know, uh, are completely different. But for uh, keeping as a disaster recovery uh, high availability solution, uh, you can just simply uh, do the failover and leave it a failover, and then you have to do the commit. And uh, after you do that, uh, uh, you know, you are definitely, uh, pro you know, having a perfect failover solution for your uh, uh, VMs, which is uh, running in the cloud. The same thing you can do it on the. Uh, you know, uh, for the VMs which is running, uh, which is running on your uh, data center, all you need to do is you have to install an agent. Because if you go here for the VMware or for the Hyper-V, you have to, you know, uh, for the Hyper-V, it's uh, for Hyper-V and VMware, it's also a little bit different steps. Uh, but uh, for uh, for any uh, domain controllers or for the servers which is running in a data center, you need to have the agent. Uh, install and you need to have the connectivity. There are few URLs that you need to have the connectivity uh, for this uh, recovery services world uh, to be functional. So those things uh, you will, uh, you know, uh, definitely uh, see them uh, on the Microsoft website. I will also share that uh, uh, definitely that the link along uh, with this uh, uh, video. So uh, overall, uh, what I would say is, uh, you know, uh, the Azure Site Recovery effectively support the replication and disaster recovery for your Azure VMs, the similar process and procedure can be definitely uh, uh, carried for uh, VMs which is running in your uh, data center um, and also uh, VMs which is running in Hyper-V and the VMware. So basically the Azure Site Recovery offers several advanced features, but it's very important to know that you need to uh, you know, uh, understand what is your requirement, the current configuration, and based on that, you need to run a proof of concept before implementing the Azure Site Recovery in a production environment and see if it meets your requirement. Uh, that's all I wanted to talk about the Azure Site Recovery. Uh, uh, and uh, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thank you.